Hi everybody. So let's talk about narcissists and how they view boundaries. Okay. Now, generally, boundaries are seen as an attack by somebody with narcissistic personality disorder. They literally think, what? How dare you? Like, just because you've said, stop. Don't do that. I don't like that. That hurts me. I view that as stalking. I view that as harassment. Leave my partner alone. Leave me alone. Leave my socials alone. As soon as you start saying no, no, nah, that isn't going to happen anymore to somebody with narcissistic personality disorder or a high level of narcissistic traits, maybe even they're a narcopath or a psychopath or a sociopath, they literally, their brain just goes, what? And very quickly, right? Very quickly, they'll reframe that and they'll decide that you're harassing them. You're abusing them. You're insulting them. You're rejecting them. You're taking control. How can you take control? I've got to have control. Control has to be mine. All of it. All of the time. You don't want me in your life? What? Why? I'm fantastic. I'm an amazing person. I'm a victim. You've hurt me. All that. That's all going, we will, right? In a narcissist's head. When you do something as simple as make an attempt to protect yourself, protect your peace, protect your liberty, Protect your own decision making, protect your mental health, protect your social media, protect your income, protect your family, protect your relationship, protect your uh, your kids. So when you say no, stop, go away, or anything as benign as that, right, the narcissist will retaliate because they've, they felt the agony and the pain of you taking control. Okay, so they're going to retaliate with lies, false allegations, exaggerations, verbal attacks, the smear campaign, stalking, harassment, trolling. Um, they're going to either be super vulnerable, right, to try and get support for this whole new narrative that you've done something to them, right, when really you've tried to get away from them, right? Or they're going to go into, I, I call it, attack kill mode which is the stalking and the smearing and the harassment and the nasty posts the nasty memes and uh, getting their friends to attack you and do all that sort of stuff so they're, they're going to go one of two ways sometimes you'll get a particular type of narcissist that can do both right because they can mask themselves so skillfully because they've managed to do it for so many years that they can play the vulnerable card the victim card right and twist and warp your language saying, stop, leave me alone, or you did this wrong, or you did that wrong, or you shouldn't have done this, or you shouldn't have done that. Boundaries, 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 right? And they can be vulnerable, vulnerable, but actually they might be living a totally secret life online. So you, you're, this is going to take you years to work out years i mean i've only just worked it out with a couple of my friends on uh, instagram and, and me have unpacked something today and we both just worked out that there's somebody leading quite an extreme double life um very much what they project in the public domains that they uh get us into or we are, we we both tend to sort of circle in and the online life that they are um leading uh and this person has to be extremely good at masking and narcissists will mask they will mask for lots of reasons they'll mask to get new supplies they'll mask to keep supplies they'll mask to um get friends and support and flying monkeys and empathy uh, they'll mask to get you in trouble they'll mask to feel good about themselves they'll mask to feel confident powerful and in control and safe but they'll also mask to protect the horrifically antisocial negative uh, behaviors that they're doing and they've learned how to do that as a, from a young age um, because narcissistic personality disorder and these types of personality structures form in youth and these types of people they tend to have been the golden child and only child they tend to have been through some form of trauma growing up maybe a father left or a mother left or there was a um, some big hoo ha that woo gave them a you know an in, a emotional injury, a traumatic event, and made them feel unsafe, made them feel like being one way wasn't good enough. So they started to split and create different personalities. Uh, made them feel like by manipulating, they got the ultimate um, sense of control and power and safety. So they they soon learned to play all these different characters in different situations that made them feel good in each individual situation. And of course, normal healthy people can't cope with that you know whether his or her parents saw this manipulation um or chose to ignore it 
because the person has continued to do it into adulthood for many, many years. Um, these people usually are very good at holding down jobs, professional jobs, um, jobs where they have power, jobs where they're respected and liked very much. And But in order to vent what they really are and how they really feel, they have to go on, usually online. I mean, that's the way the world now is all online. We're all online for, 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 for multiple reasons, especially if you're self-employed like I am. I have to have my online um, uh my online social media accounts, I have to have them. It's the only way that I can generate an income now and I can grow my business um, as well. And what you'll tend to find is a lot of these types of narcissists, um, they don't need to be online. They don't need social media. It's got nothing to do with the job or the friendships because perhaps they've already got what appears to be quite a solid little friendship group on the on the outside of social media. Um, but they choose to have social media because it allows them to, to lose the mask of respectability and vulnerability and kindness and sweetness and this can be any gender male female or however you identify and then lapse into their real true self and social media because it's such an easy place isn't it to have a fake picture a fake account a fake name you can get a burner phone you can get a like a an email i don't i don't know how you i know burner phones somehow can help in some way but um and set up email accounts because um it it that's how it's a safe place for them because they're not going to be held accountable. They don't need to play nice. They don't need to hold in all the rage and the hate and the jealousy and the angst. And they can say exactly what they feel about a person and they can um, uh, project and deflect and abuse a person online with absolutely no uh, qualms at all. And then just come offline and just go back to being this perfectly nice, kind man or woman. Um, it's incredible that they, you can have people that genuinely are light and dark, yin and yang, good and bad, within one personality, one person's body. Um, I, I, when I've studied narcissists and I've been with narcissists and I've been around narcissists, the masks tend to fall a lot quicker. Um, and you tend to kind of know that the person who's presenting themselves to you is something not quite right. But with these hyper-vulnerable narcissists and narcopaths, they're really, really, really good at nothing being like dodgy about them at all. They really do blind their followers and supporters with with the vulnerability. They're so vulnerable and so sweet and so nice and so hardworking and so good that, that, that people become almost gaslighted into it. It's just not possible that he or she could ever be doing this to this other person online or could be cheating or, you know, whatever their secret life is. I'm talking about online secret lives and boundaries, but it's when you put a boundary up against this person, whether you're a friend, a colleague, a partner, or a parent, a sibling, that you see the true self because you have triggered the monster beneath. You have triggered their insecurity and their rage and their anger. And I think I've triggered somebody's uh, in the last few days because five Cora troll accounts have been set up all by the same person, the same stuff and same defensive stuff, same offensive stuff, same uh, abusive content towards me just in the last few days. Uh, so I track that back um, and I, you know, I'm starting to piece things together a little bit, unfortunately. Um, and um, just to just to know, I have a lot of. Uh, I have a class, I have a group of stalkers, uh, male and female, and haters, male and female, and they all fly monkeys. So there's a, there's like little. I'm like a dartboard. I'm the bullseye in the middle, and around me is cir circle after circle after circle after circle of unpleasant person, desperate to drag me back and pull me down. But what after eight years of this now, I'm starting to notice the different type of hater and why they hate me, and the timings all kind of fit, and the stuff they say kind of fits. I'm actually becoming like, a, well, a stalking, well, I am a stalking expert anyway. Um, I'm the, lead, the UK's leading expert in Casanova psychopaths, and the stalking tends to go hand in hand with these men. But it, they can be women as well. But that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about the, 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 the boundaries and how that helps the mask kind of be revealed. If, if you're particularly sensitive to these people, you almost know what boundary to put up, what to say, what to do, how to act, or what will set them off. 
and I'm pretty confident I know what set this particular person off. Um, so the five accounts, I've kept, I've got screenshots of them all, I've reported them all, some of them have been removed by Cora, some of them the person themselves has panicked and removed it. But um, the way that Cora works is you can see the uh, previous activity and the edits, even if the uh, troll has deleted it. Um, and I know how to work Cora because it's one of my biggest business platforms for the, the stuff I do. I really know how to work it. And these people, this person or these people don't know how to work it, obviously, because they're making mistakes. Um, and I've never reported the Cora stuff to police. Um, and from my knowledge, Cora have what's called a be nice, be respectful policy. It's not like Twitter. So this, my Twitter troll, who I think is a different person to this Cora person, and um, my Twitter troll has got away with it because Twitter has a, it's called freedom. They call it freedom of speech, that you can say and do anything, no matter how criminal it is here in the UK, no matter how disgusting and offensive and traumatizing it is for me and other people. Twitter just go back to the police when the police put a side comes in and say, but we, we, we pride ourselves on freedom of speech and the police just go and give up, right? But Cora are different. Cora are really strict and they're really, um, really good at dealing with trolls and abuse and stalking. And, and I've never actually tested that out and reported it to the police. But because this has all happened circumnavigating a certain event in the last wee while, right? Uh, uh, the the police, I can test it out when I go to the police with all this stuff. Um, and we can see if Cora are willing to play ball and we can find out who's behind these accounts. So the person that's behind these accounts has made a big mistake because not only have I worked out who it is, with the help of my friends, um, we're now in a position um, to deal with Cora with it. So it'll be interesting to see if they stop now. Um, because you can, if Cora are willing to engage with the police, you're in a lot of trouble and you should really have just left me alone and just stop. Um, which is all I've ever wanted, really. I don't want revenge. I just want you to stop and leave me alone and let me get on with my life. Um, so let's see what happens next.